Three great blueprints to add to your home assistant configuration, focused on advanced heating, zone notifications, and phone charging. Before we proceed with this, let's quickly recap what blueprints are. They are script on automation configuration with certain parts marked as configurable. With that out of the way, let's start with the first one. Advanced heating control gives you incredible amount of flexibility if you want to adjust the heating exactly the way you like it across people presence, schedulers, frost protection, and many more. So let's dive right into it. We'll add it to our Home Assistant installation. Preview, as you can see, I already have it. So I'll just override it very quickly so we don't get stuck on this portion of the video. And we are in. With summary and installation out of the way, let's get into the first option. First of all, we need to choose the entity we control, which are, is our thermostat entity. You can have more than one, so you, then you may run multiple configurations. You also can choose the operation mode, is it heat, cool, or automatic? And then you can move into the temperatures, where you can choose between static echo temperatures, an echo temperatures, comfort temperatures, and many more. You can also choose it based on people to specify the heating plan and make it more dynamic based on the specific people whether they enter the home or leaving the home and the period of time it takes for them. Next up, we have scheduling. We can specify the specific schedule for work. You can actually do it by creating a scheduler helper within the Home Assistant. You can see I have a couple. You can create a specific one for yourself. You can also choose from the list of schedules you have to make it more convenient. And then finally do the adjustments and modifiers to those schedulers. Moving on is a presence sensor and an off, on and off entity, which identifies if somebody is in the room and switches the thermostat on, or it takes it off completely if somebody is not in the room. Proximity allows you to preheat rooms depending on how far or close are you toward this specific location. It takes your device information and identifies the distance and the duration and makes adjustments based on that. Window door detection is pretty straightforward. If you have a window open, it will switch off the thermostat. If you have it closed, it will switch the thermostat back on. Very straightforward. You can also give the reaction time, so there might be a little bit of a delay in case you just open and close it quick. Calibration is available for certain types of thermostats, namely Tado, Akara, and a few others. And it allows you to calibrate the system using additional sensors in the room or just perform a generic calibration. You can also go into the aggressive mode, whereby if your thermostat for some reason reacts slowly, or only start to react to large temperature differences to being on and off, you can adjust that in settings too, and also create an offset if necessary. You can then go into the frost protection, set it at the temperature that you desire, and then it will ensure that your pipes are never froze. Modes-wise, you can choose the party mode, so it will ignore all other settings and just continue to either heat or not heat for a given period of time. You can also add the guest mode. If you have somebody coming into the house and you not there, and it also will override certain settings. You also can create a winter mode, which is an on and off based on a certain automation. And then you can also do a bunch of tweaks in terms of service call delays, resetting temperature, turning off echo modes, minimum temperatures, switching to Fahrenheit and more. Next on our list is a notification extended zone blueprint. So let's add it to our installation in the Home Assistant. Let's look into the options that this blueprint provides us. First of all, it allows you to get a notification when a person enters or leaves a certain zone. It allows for custom actions when a person enters or leaves the zone. It can allow you to modify your notifications based on color, channel, group, etc. Enable disable notifications easily, custom conditions to block them, and notification button support open a URL, whether it's a shopping list or a camera feed or whatever else you'd look at. So now let's look at individual configurable options down below. Naturally, the first step you'll have to take is to identify which persons will trigger the automations when they enter or leave the specified zone. You can have as many people as you want added to your home assistant configuration, Therefore, you can add this blueprint multiple times over depending on the individual. You then have to define the zones that you want to observe for either arriving or leaving. You can again create the zones for the Home Assistant native uh, toolkit. And then you can also set the leaving zone as an optional, where zones specified are used exclusively for leaving notifications or actions. So maybe somebody is leaving from work or leaving from the house, you want to know just about those. That's a great option to use here if you need it. 
You can then say the duration, that the person must be out of the zone for a particular uh, period of time. So if somebody just pop out to the shop and comes back, it doesn't trigger the notification. You can then choose the device to notify, notification group if you have one, and details around the notification arriving title. It obviously puts person, arrives, or you can write anything else you possibly want. Same applies to notification leaving title or notification leaving message. Again, you customize it to your liking and go ahead. You can then enable leaving notification. If on, it will send when a person leaves the zone. You can add the status bar icon. You can add notification color, notification channel, or notification tag if you choose to, although that's mainly available for Android. The only thing you can really customize for iOS is the criticality of notification and it will appear no matter what the phone state is in. So if you switch this toggle on, you know that your iPhone will be notified no matter what. With that other way, you can add certain custom conditions when the automation action part should be triggered. You can also add them just for arriving or just for leaving or entering it in any other way. Finally, you can cut, add a custom button text or custom button URL. So when the message arrives, you click on it, you get a particular view of the Lovelace dashboard. Maybe you want to have a video feed or something else. That's a great option to further customize this blueprint. Again, great blueprint if you really use the zones a lot within your Home Assistant build. Huge thanks to the author. The last blueprint for today focused on turning off the phone while charging to preserve the battery life. Let's add it to our installation now. As you can see, this one is very straightforward. You identify the smart plug that you want to control or smart outlet, depending on what you have in your house. You choose the phone battery sensor that you want to measure against, and then you set the charge percent, at which point the socket will just switch off. I'd recommend to set it to 80% if you can manage throughout the day on 80%, because that is the best way to preserve the battery life of your phone. If you can't, you can set the custom percentage as you see fit. And there you have it, you will be able to preserve the battery life of your device for longer and therefore potentially delay the refresh for a little while. Thanks to the author here, very straightforward. I hope these blueprints can add more versatility to your Home Assistant installation. With that, I'd like to thank you for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.